Hi, I'm going to be covering everything from your floors, uh, checking the floors to the size of the balls that you need to use for a particular horse trailer, just safety tips, uh, loading tips to help you be successful. This gray trailer has a requires two inch ball and the other one two and five sixteenths. So it's good to know what size and check. Uh, you don't want to be going down the highway and find out you have the wrong size ball for the trailer. And this is what can happen if you do. Um, luckily, the safety chain worked and pulled the brake on that tr tire. Um, I see too many set up like this uh, connected to the safety chain and that is not going to pull your brake pin. And you can make things nice and neat using this, but make sure that is connected to your actual tow vehicle. Um, you can make it yourself seen, especially in the dark, adding um, the stickers there, the caution horses in black, but it shows up in red reflector. I actually have more than that now. That was on the old trailer that I had. Um, you want to make yourself seen. Um, bull snap here is no good. It's way too short. Uh, so I don't the, like to leave the rope. The that most people use that are um, Velcro or the Velcro they can pull out and learn to back off. The other ones are, have the little um, arrow that you're supposed to manually pull to release if they get into trouble. But a lot of people think that those things magically break away on their own if the horse panics. You actually have to manually do it. And most people have that snap right here. And if a horse is thrashing about rearing up over this, or in a panic, the last place I'm going to do is go, I'm going to save you with their feet going like this. So if you do use those, that snap goes on this end of the horse. Other thing, people have bull snaps here. You need two hands for a bull snap. If you own a tie with a bull snap, put a double-ended clip on it so you can unclip with one hand. But again, those panic snaps, once uh, it, they panic, hard pull and then they panic further, break their halter, etc. Um, so here, if they jerk their head quick, it does that, which causes them not to panic. It has a drift about it, just like our hands need to have. So, I only use this as a stock trailer. I put the guts in it today for demonstration. So it's not the greatest, but without the guts in it, it works for hauling babies in here or horses that aren't used to this confinement. So um, a lot of times if you want to put this over, we can tie this and hold it to the door so it doesn't swing on some trailers that have the door that swings. And then, then when you want to bring it back, you can just pull it free. Uh, for problem loaders, um, I like to use a rope halter because it gives you the extra strength that you need if the horse a lot of times they go off to the side um, and, you, and if you have a chain over the nose the when you shank them that scrunches up their nose and it doesn't release where if you shank them with this it releases um, immediately after the correction also the shank chains the leather strap is only about yay long once you put it over the nose so you can attach whatever length of lead you want to this. Um, coming inside the trailer, um, most horses prefer a step up because they're stepping into a solid object. Um, the ramps are a little unsteady. So coming in here, the breast bar, a lot of the escape doors are over on this side. You want to make sure if that escape door is open, don't ever take this down, leave this up. Um, a lot of people will drop this down, load their horse in, and want to go out the escape door, um, and the horse can follow you right out. And some people say, well, it's too small. It doesn't matter. Horses have gone through little windows. You can look it up on YouTube, even though they can't fit. 
Um, so you want to always have this up and you're going to have to limbo under here um, and not leave it down so you don't have to bend down. Uh, once the horse is in the trailer, I like to use this clip. Alright, the clip from Smart Tie. Okay, there's also a blocker tie ring. I'm more familiar with this, I've used both. You have to have a half inch or three quarter inch rope to fit in here so it slides. And you can adjust the torque right here, tighten it up if you have a horse that can really pull. And if you have a younger horse or sensitive horse that's not. Hay bag. Um, I like the small hole net, but I wouldn't use it on a horse that had shoes because they could get a shoe in there, um, hook it on there. A lot of people have their hay bags tied right here and that's kind of awkward for the horse to eat. His neck comes over here so he can reach this. There's a lot of things that a horse can get hurt on in this type of trailer, the most common uh, where I'm living in the east. They can go under a butt bar, over a breast bar, come in with their head down and hit their head on the breast bar. Self-loading in a two horse with the butt bar, breast bar and ramp. Sending the horse in, butt bar goes up, ramp, horse gets tied. It's a lot of ventilation in my new stock trailer. And this one had quite a lot of ventilation as well. It had a back window and a side window. <clears throat> and of course that does completely open there. You need to keep your trailers clean. You can get the undercarriage too with the sprayer that doesn't get attention and in the winter time I am hitched up and ready to go in emergency I had a bag over the hitch here when we go somewhere we can uh, tie the horses right outside with the clip hang a water bucket here I can even leave my horse on the trailer because of the ventilation it's cooler than outside uh, the mats this is just uh, you need to clean them, move them. They're a pain to move, but clean them, let it dry. Um, I don't know what it doesn't say about the hitch, but it's my new gooseneck. Oh, when you first get a trailer, you want to ride in it and listen to what's dinging. Um, illegal on the roads. Um, you can go in a parking lot. You don't want to ride in there with a horse ever. Um, I know people do. Uh, this one had all the banging because the spacers were not correct on a brand new trailer. Somebody put in the little ones, they need the big one. Uh, another brand new trailer right here. The weld didn't reach all the way. I could stick a knife in there to the floor. And yuck. I did not take this home. Check your floors. Taking a ride in my new horse trailer. This is a sundowner rancher. This is a trailer simulator. So I set this up at my house. Um, horse that not really a problem. Had a problem with it, but look at the stuff on it. Um, but this is a good demonstration to show how I teach problem loaders to load. 
And so you're holding steady pressure and you release when the horse comes forward. And we don't want to pull too hard because if we're in the trailer, they'll hit their head. We want to let him sniff the floor, the sides of the trailer, uh, steady pressure and release. Now horses go out to the side and I can teach him at the simulator that he's not going to get a release of pressure for doing that. I am not going to get off the trailer and go line him up. I've already lined him up and he knows I want him to come straight forward. If I want him to go off the side, I would have asked him to by looking there and sending him there with pressure. So, uh, so here you go under and then grab a straight line from my left hand to his halter. Hold steady pressure. Don't pull release, pull release. Don't tug. Right? Steady pressure. <clears throat> so now I'm going to follow that all the way down and push him back. So he cannot hang on my lead rope, which is, and now send him back in the middle. Uh, this is what I do to all my problem loaders. If they're muling out and just not coming forward at the tailgate, I'm not going to uh, give them a release of pressure ever. I'll run my hand down that line and push him back. All right? Again, I lined him up here and then he threw his bum over to the side. Same thing they do to avoid loading. So steady pressure, release, you can go pet his head and you notice I have a loose line in my right hand. Okay, steady pressure, release for one step, for a little give, the slightest try. There, I'm holding till he gives me a step. You know, if he bobs his head, that's not gonna get him a release. Right there, he moved his right front. Steady pressure, release. It's just all about pressure and release. Um, and the handler not panicking when the horse runs backwards and pulling their head and letting them get their head hit. So he's checking it out again. He wants to look at it, smell it. Release. Little pet. And you'll see, um, we'll go away and load him in the simulator one more time and he does much better. And if we have a little bit of patience, um, and very good timing, then the horse will load up. He knows what's expected and he realizes that he's not going to get a release for uh, standing there and doing nothing. And you see my body language, I got a leg cocked to, you know, exhale, you know, when a horse doesn't plan on going anywhere, they have a leg cocked and they're just relaxing, so. And the other key to my success for problem loaders is going to the right. Okay, you see I'm turning them to the right and not going left. Everybody wants to go left. You turn him to the right, he has to yield to your feet and I have a loose line and I'm not dragging him there. I only use steady pressure when he stalls out. Then I go back to steady pressure and release when he comes forward. So I hope you got some information out of this video. Boy, it, it uh, takes a whole lot to edit and put these things together, but um, hopefully you appreciate them. And if you got a problem loader and you're not too far from me, give me a call.